This is Dr. Young, um, and this is the introductory uh, class for History 357, Ancient Rome at Flagler College. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, doing this. I have not taught this class previously uh, in an online format. Uh, I have, however, taught it several times in the classroom, and I'm uh, always delighted with the opportunity to study Ancient Rome, and I hope that that will um, be a shared passion for, for many, if not all of you. Um, I, I wanted to take this opportunity uh, to go over the syllabus and to kind of go through some of the logistics of the course, um, just so we're all comfortable. Um, if you have questions after this, uh, feel free to post those in a discussion board, uh, email me directly. Um, I will also hold uh, this term a... Um, a weekly kind of office hour, or we might even call it a kind of a, an optional synchronous class for one hour, um, where students can come and we can talk about any of the course materials. Um, I will devote that time specifically to a discussion of sources about which you need to write papers and things like that. But uh, that's another great opportunity to you know ask questions about logistics and and uh, kind of matters of the course that uh, that, that you're worried about. Um, so let's let's talk about this course a little bit. Um, you'll see I'm teaching, or rather, I'm recording this for summer term A 2021. Um, if this is happening in a subsequent year, I'm teaching again and recycling this. My apologies. This was, will not be the first time, I guess, at that point that I'll be teaching it online. Um, the course description um, notes that this will this class will seek to understand the political, religious, economic, cultural, and social development. That's a whole lot of things, right? of the Roman Republic and Empire from around the 8th century BCE through the ascendancy of the Christian Empire in the 5th century CE. So we're covering more than a millennium of material here, which is a lot. Um, we will not try to do all of that equally. Um, as the uh, description also notes here, while it will include an outline of political history, its main emphases will be social and cultural in nature. And by social, we mean things like uh, the organization of society, right? The institutions that governed and shaped the lives of the people, um, the, the, specifically their relationships with each other. Uh, by cultural, we mean the thought world, um, the imagination of the Roman people, the, their art, their literature, their folklore, their religion. Uh, those are the, the types of things we mean by cultural. Now, we will, of course, cover the political narrative that... Uh, is an important component of this and a lot of the source material deals with it and so you know we have to talk about the different um, well the key figures in the late republic for instance or uh, the key emperors uh, in the imperial period um, but we will do everything we can to you know give the political narrative and try, try to understand that but then talk in particular about the social and cultural aspects of Roman society or Roman uh, civilization. Students will, of course, this is a, an upper division history class, be, will, will be, be expected to grapple with both primary and secondary sources. Um, and if you do not know what those are, uh, just a, a brief uh, comment on that. Primary sources are things that come from the time period in question. These are the materials that help us know what the Romans were thinking, what they were doing. Um, the, ne the, the very next video lecture will in fact deal with primary sources. Uh, this is perhaps unusual for a history course to immediately talk, kind of give a, a full overview of the primary sources available. But hopefully uh, once you go through that, you'll understand why. Um, uh, ancient Rome did not, uh, I mean, this was a long time ago, right? A couple thousand years ago. Uh, not a lot of material has survived from that period. Um, and most of it, at least the written documents that have survived, were written by people who were considered elite. Um, not very many people could read and write or had any uh, practical use for literacy, unlike in the modern period. Um, and so we actually have a finite amount of source material and we need to understand the scope of that to understand the possibilities that we have for Roman history. So I will talk about that at some length. Um, but primary sources are the bread and butter of a student of history. You have to 
have some comprehension of what sources are available and what they tell us and, and uh, also some tools for n understanding how to analyze them. Um, and we will spend a great deal of time, in fact, this will be our kind of main task in this course, a great deal of time talking about you know, how to use primary sources and what primary sources are available. Secondary sources are things written uh, subsequently, um, but secondary sources in the kind of uh, historical toolkit are modern interpretations or recent interpretations of things that happened at some point in the past. Um, most especially things like uh, research articles and monographs, which are book length studies on some very narrow thing. Um, in this course, we will read a couple of monographs uh, and write book reviews of those. And so we will, you know, spend a, a fair amount of time with secondary sources, um, trying to understand what historians have said about this and deciding whether we agree with the conclusions they have drawn or if we, you know, have some some way to comment on this ourselves. Um, there is, it is not a prerequisite to agree with everything that you learn in this class and, and uh, you know, the, or rather the information is presented to you. Um, in fact, I encourage students to challenge the things that they read and, and try to think about things in new and original ways. Uh, expected student learning outcomes, I don't want to read this whole thing, but I, I just want to note here, the, the gist of this is studying something that's this old means that, well, things have changed dramatically. Even though Rome is one of the foundation stones of Western civilization, specifically its legal and political structures, um, which were imitated, copied even, we might even say plagiarized, uh, by, among others, the founding fathers of the United States of America. Um, there's a reason that the U.S. is called a republic, right? Um, uh, that goes back to ancient Rome and, and to this effort of the founding fathers to emulate Rome. Um, but as I was saying, even though this is the found, one of the foundation stones of Western civilization, even in its modern uh, uh, derivation, um, ancient Rome's a very different place than the modern period. And we have to accept that. Um, we have to expect and even invite being confused um, I, I like to call this, as it says here, productive puzzlement, right? Um, if we encounter something that's strange, and we will, um, uh, to give you a brief example, we're going to read um, uh, a 2nd century CE um, story. Uh, we might call it a novel. That really wasn't, that's really not what it was. But, you know, this is a kind of uh, epic story. It's a picaresque story that is all sorts of... Um, hijinks happen, you know, with the characters in it. Um, uh, it's called either the Metamorphoses or um, in its title that we have, The Golden Ass. Um, and we will see some really strange stuff in that story. Uh, things that the Romans would have perhaps expected to see in a story, but which just are strange to us. Um, instead of just rejecting this, uh, we're going to try to understand it on the terms of the ancient people who wrote this and told the story and listened to the story um, to understand why these things exist there, right? And, and this process, as I say here in this paragraph, may require setting aside um, of cultural, historical, and religious notions about the ancient period. Um, but the goal here is empathy. We want to try to understand what ancient people were thinking, why they were thinking that, and we should expect that their thoughts are very different from ours um, because they lived in a very, very different time, right? This is why historical context is so important. And so a lot of what I will try to do in things like video lectures and why I give you the readings that I give you, especially things like a textbook, um, is to establish the historical context that will allow you, once you understand that context, to make sense of the material that you encounter, especially the primary source material that we will read closely. And in the process of doing this, we will uh, seek to hone, as it says here, our critical thinking, close reading, and effective writing skills. Any history class ought to do those things and hopefully do, it, uh, do them pretty well. Required texts. Um, the one you're gonna need, well, two, I should say, you're gonna need through the whole, some, the whole term are Thomas W. Africa's book called The Immense Majesty. Um, 
This is uh, a, a somewhat older textbook. It was published in the 1990s, so the thing is almost 30 years old at this point. But I like it because it's it's just fun to read. It's a nice read. It, I mean, the information is not necessarily dated or overly romantic or anything like that, but Thomas W. Africa did have a flair for prose. Um, I have used other textbooks in teaching, teaching Ancient Rome that contain much more information than this, but they read like they're written by a committee, and, and in some cases they are, right? Um, uh, and so hopefully you'll enjoy this textbook, and it'll, it'll give you the information that you need uh, kind of to start you know, along your study of this. And there will be an assignment from this book every week of this term, um, sometimes a bit shorter, sometimes a bit longer, um, and we'll, we look at the, uh, at the, data, the, the weekly schedules, and uh, you'll see how all of that works. The other uh, one that you're going to need through the whole term is this uh, selection of primary sources. It's a, it's a source anthology. It's called Classics in Translation, Volume 2, Latin Literature. Uh, the editors are Paul L. McKendrick and Herbert M. Howe. Um, this is also a somewhat older collection of primary sources, but the primary sources themselves don't exactly update, right? I mean, uh, ancient Romans wrote things and they died and aren't around to uh, produce new editions of them uh, for themselves. And so this is, I, I find this to be a very good source collection. It is um, not overly long. Uh, there is a two volume, something like 2000 page source anthology that um, is much more comprehensive than the McKendrick and Howe. Um, but uh, I would not um, want to assign that to you. That would be something that you know you would buy if you were studying this in graduate school or something like that. Um, uh, we will read actually an introductory essay from that collection uh, just because I want to get, I mean, it's a very good essay about the sources um, uh, of ancient Rome. And then there are three other books that you will need to have access to. Uh, one of these, as I said, is this long story written in the second century CE by a guy named Lucius Apuleius. Um, it's called The Golden Ass, uh, otherwise known as The Metamorphoses. Um, it's a story about a guy who uh, sets out on an interesting journey and uh, encounters all sorts of challenges, including getting turned into a donkey. Uh, this, I believe, is the source, by the way, uh, for the story in William Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream of Bottom being turned into an ass, right? Um, uh, he knew of Apuleius' story and was imitating that to some extent, or at least borrowing the trope uh, from Apuleius. Um, but uh, this has a lot of mythological material in it. Uh, it's one that we will try our best to understand, to make sense of. You need to write a paper on this. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to make some sense of it. And then two monographs, uh, Edward J. Watts's book called Mortal Republic, How Rome Fell into Tyranny. Uh, this is a monograph trying to explain how the Republic uh, was replaced by the Empire, um, uh, how the Republic was overthrown by, among others, Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar, and how you know it became an empire, um, how this system that had served Rome fairly well for several centuries uh, was simply inadequate and in how individuals of various stripes um, set about to transform it often in, in uh, we might say, selfish or ambitious or nefarious ways. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a great story uh, how that happens, and, and this is a, a good monograph on that that has you know, an argument that we will try to make sense of. Um, and then finally, Robert L. Wilkins, The Christians as the Romans Saw Them. Uh, you'll need to get the second edition, which is the more recent one. Um, uh, this is a fairly slim volume, um, 120, 130 pages, something like that. I could be wrong, it might be a little bit longer, but it's not, it's not a hard read, it's, it's, it's easy. Um, this is a discussion of uh, kind of reactions that the Romans had to the rise of Christianity. Um, and so we're going to read this at the very end of the course the last week um, as we talk about this transition to a Christian empire from what had previously been a kind of pagan empire. Now, um, in addition to this, there will be a few other readings that you will need to do, right? Um, let's look at the daily schedule. I shouldn't say daily schedule. It's actually weekly schedule. The class, like online classes tend to do, runs week to week. Each week you will need to be responsible for a certain number of things. And so here is your guide to that, right? 
Um, and you know, for each week you will have some things to read, uh, some things to watch, and uh, some assignments to do. All right. Um, and so if you look at, uh, for instance, week one here about the kingdom and the early republic, um, uh, that is when Rome was part of a, a larger kingdom uh, into its in, uh, transition into the, the republic, um, you need to read, if we look here, um, there is a, an article, uh, this is from the Lewis and Reinhold's uh, readings, the, the source anthology that I mentioned, um, it's uh, an introduction to the sources for studying Roman history. This is absolutely essential. Um, you really need to read this, uh, and you know, the, you'll be much better off if you do, if you understand the information in that article. Um, so please read that. In addition, for the first week, you need to read pages 1 through 66 of Thomas W. Africa's book, The Immense Majesty. Um, in addition, you also need to read, now every time you see MH here, okay, that means McKendrick and Howe. That's the Classics in Translation book. Uh, and so for this week, you need to read pages 280 through 296. This, by the way, is not the entirety of the Livy reading. You'll see down here that the second week, you have the last five pages of that, uh, which material deals more with uh, the period uh, under discussion in week two. Um, and so, you know, and then there is something on Canvas as well, and I'll show you that when we look at the Canvas page. There are a few of these. I think there are only four or five all semester. Um, and so if we look down, for instance, at um, week six, you'll see there are a couple of other short, and these are all short, uh, Canvas readings. These are online links, usually only a few paragraphs long, but they're essential sources that are not included in the McKendrick and Howe that I wanted to expose you to, um, and so please read those. Um, now, uh, we'll talk about the assignments next. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a sense of the kinds of things you need to read, okay? Um, so if we uh, look at the course requirements here. Um, first of all, every week you need to participate in a discussion board. Um, and uh, I'll show you on the Canvas page uh, how this works, um, but uh, put very simply, by Thursday of each week, um, with the exception, by the way, of week six, where uh, the week is only five days long, and so you'll need to post by Wednesday of that week, but that is made clear on uh, the instructions for that, okay? Uh, but otherwise, by Thursday of each week, you must provide an initial post of at least 250 words. Now. I, I will give you questions and kind of material to respond to, um, but this you know comes out of your reading of the assigned material, your watching of the video lectures, right? So uh, the first two, three days of the week, you need to read and watch all of that stuff so that you will be ready to post by Thursday. Uh, once you make that initial post of 250 words, you will be able to see what other people have posted. After, I mean. Uh, until you post, you will not be able to see what others have posted. This is simply to avoid um, uh, either purposeful or inadvertent plagiarism, you know, uh, kind of borrowing ideas from your course mates. Uh, I want you to react to this before you see what others have written. Um, and don't worry, by the way, if, you know, you post something and then you read other people's posts and you're like, wow, I think I totally missed the point. Chances are you didn't, um, and you know you're just noticing different things, or you're having a different reaction to it. So, you know, don't uh, don't worry if your post doesn't agree with the posts of your course mates. That's that's all part of having a conversation about these things. By the last day of each week, this is normally Sunday, except for the week, except for week six where it will be Friday you need to respond to a minimum of three of your course mates posts. Um, now, these responses should be thoughtful. They should help to further the discussion. This should not be, and I, I won't give you credit if you simply say, great post, George, or you know, whatever. Um, I don't know if we have a George in this class, but uh, you know, great post, I really liked what you said, right? That's not enough, okay? You need to, engage your course mates in conversation. Now, I will say I will be part of this. I will be posting as well, especially the first few weeks of the course, uh, to try to stimulate conversation. I will ask questions. You can ask questions. 
Um, and uh, please, if somebody asks a question, respond to that question. That counts as one of your posts. Um, and so, you know, please be thoughtful with this. Um, you will be graded on the quality of your responses. Um, and to a lesser extent on the effectiveness of your writing. Um, but uh, this, you know, this needs to be more than just a superficial uh, kind of interaction that we're having. Hopefully we're having good conversations. And I will say that most of the discussion board stuff will be the recitation of information and you know, providing some kind of interpretation of these things. Um, it is not all just regurgitation. I'm not just asking you to summarize things. Um, there will be some element of that. But, you know, I'll ask questions like, what role did the uh, Senate play in the Republic, for instance? Um, and, you know, there's not one easy, short, right answer to that question. Um, and so this is where you need to dig and come up with, you know, your understanding of these things. There's always an element of analysis in this, right? Okay, now, in addition... And this is the first time I've done this. Uh, I, I do this at the recommendation of some colleagues who have used this. Uh, we are going to have a collaborative source discussion. This will be a kind of enhancement to the, uh, the discussion boards. We're going to use a website called Peruse All. Now, I do notice here that I <laughs> spelled this wrong. I'm going to have to go into the website. Um, it's P-E-R-U-S-A-L-L, -L, Perusal, okay? And so I will put in here PDF copies of assigned primary sources. These will be things from McKendrick and Howe. Now, you will have that book already, but I will put in PDF copies of this, okay? Um, so that we can collaborative, collaboratively mark these up. Uh, that is... Make some comments on these things. What are you finding in these primary sources? You know, what, what's interesting to you? Why is it interesting? What, why do you see this passage as important? Um, each week you need to make a minimum of three comments. Now, a few words, as it says here, is insufficient. Right? And more than three comments is encouraged. And the, the same goes, by the way, for discussion board posts. A minimum of three does not mean three uh, every time, right? Uh, I think the more you engage in conversation, the better you're going to do, the more likely I am to, to give you a good grade, right? So don't just think of three doing the bare minimum. Uh, strive for excellence here with all of this, right? Um, let's have a conversation about these things. That's really what I'm trying to do with these sorts of assignments. So you'll be graded on the quality of your comments and evidence of your engagement with the text. I will take you to peruse all... Um, uh, in a couple of minutes here and show you how all, all of that works. Um, by Friday of each week, you will need to have made your three comments um, on perusal. Uh, and this is because uh, you will have papers due on these by Sunday of each week. And, you know, uh, making comment, uh, engaging with these sources by Friday will give you a couple of days then to sort of process all of that and, and write a paper on it. Uh, this is not a requirement for week six, by the way. Week six is a short week. It's only five days instead of seven. Um, and I just, uh, and we're not going to have a lot of primary source material that week. Nothing in McKendrick and Howe covers that period, for instance. And so there will be a couple of Canvas uh, readings there that, you know, we need to engage with. But um, so that, you know, this will be uh, only the first five weeks. Notice that both the discussion board posts and the source discussion will be 10 points per week. So 60 points total for the discussion board participation and 50 points total for the source discussion. Now, for the more formal assignments, you have four total papers, um, uh, which are primary source explorations. Okay, let me just read this paragraph. Because ancient sources are relatively scarce, one must learn to read them closely in order to write the history of the ancient world. We will practice this frequently in class. That's part of why we do this uh, collaborative source discussion. And students will be required to write five, uh, I should say four, so hurry. I'm editing the syllabus as we're talking here. Um, four papers based on close reading and analysis of primary sources. Uh, the first three will be prompted and shorter, and uh, the prompts are on Canvas um, for these. The last, which is on Apuleius, will be longer 
uh, six to eight pages and a more in depth and it will be unprompted. Now what I mean by that is you will need to come up with your own research question. This is an essential skill for a student of history to not only uh, be able to answer questions about history but also to ask their own questions, right? So you will write the three shorter papers first uh, to get a uh, kind of sense of this and then when you read Apuleius, and those are all in the McKendrick and Howe book, um, the longer paper on Apuleius, you will need to come up with your own research question and write a six to eight page uh, that is worth double the points, right? Um, uh, exploration paper of that. And then there will be a couple of book reviews. I do have a book review guide. Uh, it's on the, it's toward the end of the syllabus. You can take a look at that. Um, and uh, there will be two of these, uh, the, the one on the Watts book and the one on the Wilkin book. Then there will be a final exam. Now, I already have posted the final exam questions. This may be re this may sound really strange, um, but these are essay questions. I think there are seven or eight of them uh, on the list. When we get to the last week, um, actually just a few days before the final itself, I will do a random draw of these numbers and I will say, you need to write on these essays, right? I give the questions to you from the beginning of the term so you can start preparing. You can notice things and, you know, uh, these questions are broad and conceptual. They, uh, they, they have you tracing, you know, broad historical trends and things like that, right? So uh, I want you to be thinking about these questions all the, the whole term. Uh, so that you'll be well prepared to write that exam. Um, and if you want to start writing the exam, writing these essays, uh, now I'm not going to tell you which ones will actually be, you know, for credit, but if you want to write all eight essays uh, throughout the term and then simply turn in, you know, whichever two uh, end up as the random draw, I'm okay with that. Um, that's perfectly fine uh, with me. So, you know, uh, it's, it's some work, but it would be worth it, I think. You'd understand... Uh, You'd understand Roman history extremely well. I do accept late papers. Now, by this I mean the primary source explorations and book reviews with a penalty. Uh, up to a week late will be one letter grade, and then after that it's two letter grades. Okay? Um, and so just be aware of that. If you know you write an A paper, but you turn it in three days late, it's going to be a B. Um, if you turn it in three weeks late, it's going to be a C. Okay, that's just how it works. So please turn things in on time, thus not incurring penalties. Now, I obviously am very empathetic to circumstances uh, that are out of your control. You get sick, you have a family emergency, something like that, right? Um, uh, please just communicate with me on these things, right? Um, I have been known to give paper extensions to students who desperately need them, so, um, and that's without penalty. Uh, so let me know, you know, how things are going, but otherwise you will see the due dates on here. And those are hard and fast uh, with these penalties for turning in late work. I cannot accept any late assignments after June 21st in this case, which is the Monday after the term ends. It's also the day the final exam is due because I have to submit grades just a couple, like 36 hours after that, right? So, um, so that, I mean, if you turn it in, you know, a week after the term ends, sorry, it's all over. Um, I can't, I can't, uh, put that into the final grade or anything. I will not accept late discussion board posts. You know, I've had students in the past um, abuse the discussion boards, they don't post anything, and then like the last week of the term, they suddenly go back in and like post all of these things on discussion boards that were supposed to be conversations from four weeks before or something like that. I'm simply not going to allow that uh, to happen. I will leave the discussion boards up there, but I will not give you credit if you post after the week that there, that, that discussion is happening. And it's the same with the peruse all comments. Um, if you don't make those comments in the week that we're actually working on that document, that's the end of the opportunity. Okay. Um, I do take into account improvement or decline over the course of the term, uh, as well. And that can affect your final grade. Uh, so be aware of that. That's especially if your grade's kind of on the borderline. If you've seemed to improve, you know, I will, uh, chances are bump your grade up. If, you know, you're sort of slumping to the end, then I won't be as generous um, with that. Um, I don't want to take time to go through all of this. Uh, th all of this stuff here is relevant to the course. Um, 
especially the online components of all of this, right? Um, this is an important point. Remember that interactions in the course are with real people. Even though it seems like you're just posting to uh, a screen, right? You are interacting with real people. So ensure that you maintain proper online behavior. Communicate in a professional, courteous, and respectful manner. Um, academic honesty, tremendously important. Uh, I, unfortunately, have caught a lot of students plagiarizing over the years and, and have little tolerance for it. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, I hopefully should not have to tell a, a class of upper division history students uh, that they shouldn't plagiarize. But um, uh, to the first line of defense that I have is that all written work, um, meaning the papers, need to be submitted to Canvas. Canvas will run it through turnitin.com. Um, but beyond that, I have ways of detecting plagiarism, uh, and I'm pretty good at it. So, you know, please, please don't do this. Um, okay, I think that that's all I wanted to say about the syllabus. If you have questions about any of these things, um, uh, let me know. Uh, here are my book review guidelines. Here are the... F um, we, actually, I used to have films uh, as a requirement in this course. I'm not doing that this time. Um, but I will say I will give extra credit if you watch uh, a film about Roman history and write a short review of it. Um, I might recommend, say, Spartacus or something like that. That's a really great film, I think. Um, by that, I mean the 1960s Stanley Kubrick film starring Kirk Douglas, not the more recent uh, retreading of Spartacus, which was not nearly as good. Um, uh, and so, you know, if you, were, if you watch a film, I'd be happy to give you a few points of extra credit. It's not a lot, but it's some. And then here are some uh, suggestions for primary source analysis. When you write those primary source exploration papers, this is a really good thing to consult here. Okay. All right. Um, with a few minutes uh, that I want to take uh, at the end of this video, I want to just acquaint you with the um, Canvas page. Okay. Under modules, you will see that each week's material will be posted. And so for this week, I don't have the video lectures up there yet. I'm in the process of making those. That's why I'm doing this. Um, but the, uh, the syllabus is here. The week one discussion board is here. You can also get to that via the discussion tab. Um, let's click on that. Okay. Um, if we go to week one discussion board, you'll see this is what it looks like. Okay. Um, here are lots of questions. I note at the end, you don't need to answer every one of these questions. Okay. Um, and feel free to expand along alternate lines if you like, but these are just questions to prompt you to think about the things that you're reading. Um, and so you need to make your initial post of 250 words by Thursday of the first week, and then repeat that process every week uh, of the term. Um, the assignments uh, are here. Um, you can also get to them via modules. And so, you know, uh, short paper number one, the prompt, um, uh, I actually don't know if that prompt is up there yet. Um, actually, no, there it is. Yep. So here is the prompt for paper number one. This is due at the end of the first week. Okay. Um, uh, this is the three to four page, uh, paper on Livy. Um, and so, you know, have a look at that. Um, back to modules here. You'll see that the uh, extra readings, the Lewis and Reinhold introduction and the 12 tables are here. Of course, the McKendrick and Howe reading is not, nor is the Thomas W. Africa reading um, or anything like that. Um, I also have here under documents and assignments here, the final exam questions. I have a grading key because I grade with a kind of shorthand. If you want to interpret that, take a look at that grading key. Um, and then here are all of the readings that we will have addition, in addition to the McKendrick and Howe and the Africa and the other books. Um, these are the online readings. You can see there are only four of them for the whole term. Um, and here are all of my PowerPoints, okay? So you can have access to all of that. Um, and I think that that is all that we need to look at for the Canvas page. Now, this is perusal. And so the first thing that you need, one of the first things you need to do for this course, and I've got an announcement about this um, that you'll see, is to go on to this website, perusal.com, and... Uh, register first of all um, it's it's free so you have but you have to create an account um, and then you need to register for the course now under the announcement if we go back to the um, 
course web page here, you'll see that um, here's the Peruse All registration, right? So if we click on that, um, here is the ID for the course. It's young-a7fr6, right? Um, and so if you uh, go to Peruse All, create your account, and register for this course, you will see all of the assignments, okay? Now, these are going to be called Week X Source Commentary, okay? Um, and so Week 1 Source Commentary, uh, so if I click on it here and then I open it, all right, you will see in the McKendrick and Howe book here, Selections from Livy's History of Rome. I'm sorry for the... I mean, it, I think the copy is readable here. Uh, hopefully nobody has a problem with that. You can zoom in and, and things like that if you need to, all right? Um, now, with this, okay, um, you need to make at least three comments on the text, right? You can see here that I have made some comments. Anything you see in highlighted here, all right, um, this is a comment. So if I tap on that, I'm, I'm on an iPad here, so I'm tapping. Uh, you can click on it. Uh, you'll see that I've made a comment. Livy explains his motives for writing history here in addition to finding history diverting. Uh, he is also worried about the deterioration of Roman values and believes that studying history can foster a return to those values. Now, you could go on here and comment on my comment if you like. That counts. Uh, we want to have conversations after all. Or you could make your own comment. So say... Um, you know, you're interested in the story of Romulus and Remus being raised by wolves here, for instance, which is what Livy's talking about down uh, down here on the, uh, it's the bottom of page 283, right? So if you wanted to make a comment, you would simply click and drag, okay, over the part that you want to comment on, right? And then you would start commenting. Um, uh, this is an interesting story. Well, that's that's not a substantive comment, right? But you'd want to say something much more uh, pithy and, and interesting and analytical than that, right? But uh, just to give you an example, okay, of uh, what you do. Um, and be thoughtful about this. Uh, ask questions. If you have an observation to make, um, don't worry that it might be wrong, okay? I mean, we just want to have conversations about these things, right? So... Now, why do we do this? Well, this is one of the sources you have to write a paper on. And so you're actually getting help from your course mates, including me, with this, right? Um, this is our way of really having a conversation about the sources. Um, so enjoy this process of marking these things up. Um, you know, I, I've made some other comments. Uh, I think I've got one. I thought there was one here. Yeah, here it is. Um, this is where Libby's trying to account for the origins of the Roman Senate, and you know I've got some uh, comments about that here, um, drawing from history, right? So, okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, uh, I will have a discussion board about course logistics and questions. Um, feel free to ask that, and again, I will hold a once a week uh, meeting where you can ask questions about the sources. We can have a conversation about that, or or about any of the logistics of the course. All right. Okay, I think that is all I wanted to say in this video. Um, hopefully that was all clear and gives you confidence that you